Hello everybody, Scott Golden here, Golden Opportunities Coaching. Welcome to those of you who are new, welcome back to those of you who are seasoned veterans of what we do around here. And what we do around here is discuss psychological, social, emotional, and coaching related topics on a daily basis in an audio format. Uh, we do that on most days and hopefully with 270 options for you, there's something you enjoy. As we enter September, the goal for the end of September is 500 subscribers. Help us get there. Please like, subscribe, comment below. We're going to talk about six things that uh, indicate that you may, in fact, have gone through relational trauma. When I'm talking about relational trauma, specifically here I'm talking about emo uh, poor relationships of a romantic nature, although many of these signs do overlap into long-term friendships and family dynamics. But the goal of this audio is to talk about romantic relationship trauma that has an ability to... Um, affect your ability to find a, a quality partner in the future. So the first thing is body weakness. Um, if you have gone through a traumatic experience, the idea of getting into another relationship or memories of your pri most, pr most prior relationship or the most traumatic relationship in your life will cause your body to become physically ill or weak. This may mean that you have uh, more tension. Uh, if you've got arthritis, you may get a flare-up if you think a lot about it. You may have stomach upset, racing heart, pulse, increase, uh, headaches, tension throughout your body, muscular aches, and all sorts of other physical symptoms. This is because your body is only meant to be in fight or flight for short periods of time, usually a couple of minutes to maybe half an hour in an emergency situation. And fight or flight is activated in traumatic relationships a lot because we never know what's coming. From our partner, we never know what's next, but we know or think we know that it's not good. And so we're ready to, um, you know, kind of go in a different direction at a moment's notice. The next is the inability to focus, the inability to plan, the inability to um, kind of stay on one course, uh, second guessing a lot, rumination over the past, a lot of things where you replay certain life events and wonder why you didn't catch yourself, why you didn't uh, uh, protect yourself better. You may even relive certain whole conversations. You may have difficulty in focusing on things that are healthy for you. You may also punish yourself around the idea that you don't deserve to be happy or healthy because you stayed in that relationship too long. Also, your brain reacts differently. So it's harder for you to feel joy and happiness after being in a traumatic relationship. That's because your pathway in your brain that deals with fight or flight syndrome, as we mentioned before, is hyperactive. But the part that deals with positive emotions, happiness, joy, elation, attraction, serotonin, uh, dopamine, adrenaline, neosinephrine, may actually be negatively uh, affected and may have partially shut down or the pathway has been kind of rerouted away from and so it may be difficult for you to experience positive emotions after a traumatic experience for months or years at a time uh, the next one is really simple but profound your ability to trust in human nature and kindness and a person's motives even if you've known them for years you may have difficulty trusting your best friend after a toxic relationship you may you have may, may have difficulty trusting a family member or someone you've known since childhood. Even though they haven't done anything wrong to you, you no longer trust your own ability to make solid, strong, healthy decisions. And so, therefore, any interaction with people becomes painful and scary in a lot of ways. The next is you may become risk-avoidant or risk-taking. So, a relationship will, with risk will change rapidly. You may become promiscuous. You may use drugs or alcohol to kill your pain. You may uh, drive fast or take, make a lot of risks with money, overspend. You also may punish yourself. Um, you may become socially avoidant. You may second guess yourself and ruminate a lot. Your speech, your self-talk both internally as in, in your own head as well as externally as in what you allow other people to say about you and what you say about yourself to others will veer toward the negative. The last thing is you'll deal with constant regret. You will relive the final moments of that relationship or the final months or days and think about what you could have done differently, 
what you should have done differently, what you might have done differently, and why oftentimes you may feel you don't deserve to find happiness, peace, serenity, or another healthy relationship. You live perpetually in the fear and the anger and the angst of what happened there to the point where you can't regain your equilibrium. If this is something you're struggling with, I encourage you to get get help. And that can be through a coach, that can be through a minister, a counselor, a psychologist, psychiatrist, but certainly someone who deals with trauma so that you can have the best quality of life possible. Until next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.